Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This week is my youngest daughter's graduation. So I'm not going to be up at the cabin. However, I'm going to include you in on an event that's very essential for the cabin build. And that is we're going to go pick out materials for how we're going to finish the interior of the cabin. I want to be kind of smart about it. Um, we want to do it on a budget, but we don't want to be real cheap. So we thought a little bit about drywall, and drywall ain't gonna fly. Um, because we're not heating the cabin year round, drywall um, is not gonna be very durable. Uh, when it expands and contracts from the change in temperatures, Oftentimes you get popping of the nails or screws that you use to uh, fix it to the interior walls. So we're going to head out and uh, we're going to hit one of the big box stores around here. And we're just going to do a little bit of price shopping and maybe see if we can come up with some ideas that might be uh, good ideas for uh, interior of a budget cabin. So, all right, stay tuned. We're going to head out now. And uh, I got to put the dog up in the kitchen and we'll see what we can figure out. All right, folks, there's no way around this, but we're going to one of these big box stores and they require that you have on your cowboy mask. So today, yeah, I like that one. That's a nice one. You want to try it? Yeah, we could smooch later on with these on too. So anyways, uh, today when we're in there, uh, this store requires us to wear these masks, so please put up with it and uh, give us a break. So, all right, let's go inside and see what kind of ideas we can come up with for, uh, uh, for the interior of the cabin. Okay, my first thought for going cheap was to put paneling inside this cabin. Uh, check this out, man. Holy crap, is that gaudy. I mean, some of this stuff uh, is pretty hideous. And when you see the price on it, it's even worse. Check this out. Tw I don't know if you can see that, but that's $29.99 a sheet. And look how crappy that looks. Um, we're not going to be paneling the cabin. It's just way too expensive, and man, that is hideous. So let's take a look at some of our other options that we have. Um, definitely not doing brick. That's got to go. Oh, check this out. That's the dark brick. That's like my buddy's rec room back in the 80s. That's just sick. All right. Uh, let's see what other options we have. This is getting a little bit better. Um, this is uh, some, uh, some type of shiplath uh, boarding that they have. I don't like the colors. Um... That white and brown I think is kind of hideous. We got some grays and some uh, darker colors at uh, $7.99 a sheet. That's getting a little bit closer to what what my style is. Um, I think I want something a little bit more woodsy though. Something that um, is a little bit more outdoors. And uh, I'm just gonna keep walking down here. And let's see what we can find. Um, I think I want to stay with something like that ship lath. Uh, I know once I put screws through it or nails through it, the cold isn't going to make it pop as much. And also something to think about when you go with that ship lath. Um, not only is it going to look a little nicer aesthetically, but I think it's going to add a little bit of strength to the uh, structure of the building. So I'm going to kill the camera here. Uh screw it i'll keep the camera going here and let's see what we have here's some pre-finished whiteboards uh that's too too uh modern for me here we're getting a little bit more into what i like uh, we got some knotty pine here um but uh this price is a little expensive we're looking at uh ten dollars 97 cents a package uh, let's head to another area of the store. I've got uh, some ideas of some pretty cool um, siding that we can use. Or I keep saying siding. 
uh, interior panels that we can use and I think they're gonna be a little bit cheaper and I think we're gonna have better selection. So let's head back to the uh, materials part of the store and take a look down there and we'll see if we can come up with something that's a little bit more affordable. Okay, the more I do the shopping uh, for building supplies, the more I learn. My first trip should always be to the back of the store. It seems like that's where they hide the more affordable things. Um, and if you look up on the wall there, there's all sorts of all sorts of different paneling. And they call this car siding. It's still tongue and groove. Um, you can still get it made out of pine or whatever type of material you want it out of and uh, as you look up this wall There's a whole different selection Of different tongue and groove boards that you can get at a fraction of the cost is What the regular pine tongue and groove cost in the interior finishing wood uh, section? so this stuff here Back there, I think I said it was like nine or 10 bucks for um, a board. Here we're looking at about half that price. It's, you know, a lot of it is like five bucks, five and a half bucks a board. There's one here for pine at 439 a board. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go. I wanna have tongue and groove pine on the inside of the cabin. It's gonna be thicker, more durable. It's gonna add stability to the structure. Um, it's gonna be more, um, dependable during the hot and cold temperature changing uh, that happens within the seasons and uh, the quality's there but here you got to look for too is uh, some of those pine boards are um, already pre-finished so you don't have to worry about adding uh, like any polyurethane over it and uh, you can get a little bit cheaper boards that aren't pre-finished uh, but you're gonna pay you know a little bit less price for it which is probably the way I'm gonna go I want to know what type of finishes put on there myself and I want to have a little control over that so I think we came up with the um, with the interior walls that we're gonna use uh, I'm not gonna put it horizontal like these boards are I think I'm gonna put it vertical and uh, a lot of these boards when you look at these boards they're two-sided um, one side it's like an 8 inch uh, pine board and on the other side it's cut down to like two 4x4 four four boards. That gives you the illusion that you have uh, tongue and groove boards put together that only four, uh, I say 4x4, four four, I meant 4 inches wide. You know what I'm talking about. So I think that's the way I'm going to go for the interior walls. However, I think it would be a little bit too much if I did the ceiling of the cabin uh, in all pine wood like that. So, I've got an idea, as we were walking through the first section of the store, uh, I went past the material that I think is gonna be pretty decent for the cabin. Um, it's gonna serve for two different purposes. Let's go back over there and I'll show you what I'm thinking of and I'll tell you why I think it might be good in this application that I'm looking for. So, uh, let's head over there. All right, check this out. I found something really cool that I'm excited about. Um, so we have our woodsy pine interior walls that we're gonna do. Tongue and groove, I should say. See these corrugated steel panels? They're not that expensive. Uh, it's like seven and a half bucks a sheet. Each sheet is two foot wide by eight feet long. You can also get smaller sheets or longer sheets, depending on what your, uh, what your um, application is and what your, what your wants are. So that there, the reason why I'm drawn to it is when I have the wood burning stove going during the summertime, um, that's gonna be reflecting that radiant heat that's coming off the stove and bringing it back down on my face and my body. And I think that would be very, very comfortable. 
And then in the summer, when we don't have the wood burning stove going, it's going to do just the opposite. Uh, it's going to help it feel cool inside. And uh, styling wise, I like it because it breaks up the monotony. Uh, I mean, too much wood would just be too gaudy. So I think the break up in surfaces would be kind of cool. We got the, uh, the steel roof with the uh, pine uh, interior tongue and groove uh, paneling. And so I think that would be really cool. So I feel bad because I was expecting to walk into the store and be here for hours trying to find the materials that I liked. And uh, I just walked through the building section and I bet you I've only been here maybe 15 minutes and I already know what I want to do for my interior of my building. So the only thing that concerns me is when I have this stuff up on the ceiling, I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to mount my lights to it because it is a corrugated, um, ridgy, you know, type of surface. So my lighting isn't going to um, bolt right up to it without smashing that, if you know what I mean. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the lights that I have and um, the base of the lights are round. And so I'll pick up a hole saw that I can just draw that, uh, drill that size of a hole through this steel paneling and uh, maybe mount it so that that discussion is recessed in the paneling. I think it'll look good yet. And if I have to, I can finish it off with like some silver caulk or clear caulk. If you guys have any ideas on how I could mount my ceiling fan to that, let me know in, a content, uh, in the comment section or uh, my, my lights that I'm gonna be mounting from overhead as well. Uh, I'm gonna have to get creative, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna have to look any further. That's gonna be the ceiling. The wood is gonna be the interior walls. I think it's gonna look woodsy and uh, and I think it's going to offset a, uh, each other enough to where it's really going to complement each other. So my mind is made up. That's what I'm going with. Um, I better go find the people that I'm shopping with because I kind of walked off on my own. So we'll catch up with you. Uh, once we get home, I'm going to figure out the prices and I'll let you know how much the wood um, tongue and groove boards are in comparison to this... Um, stainless steel or i keep saying stainless steel i think it's galvanized it's actually corrugated galvanized steel um roofing material is what they refer to it as you can see it up uh, uh, above me i've seen a lot of people do it like wainscoting in their rec rooms like that it looks really cool uh it might not be bad to put that uh behind a wood burning stove too because i'm sure that it would help with fireproofing so we still i'm up in the air on that i'm not sure if i'm gonna put stone behind the uh, wood burning stove or that would be quick and easy we'll see how much money we have left in the budget and we'll make that decision later okay so i just got home and crunched some numbers it looks like um it's not really that bad a price for the tongue and groove pine that's going to be the interior walls i'm going to be spending right around $900 and then for the corrugated uh, galvanized ceiling we're going to be spending roughly around $350 so that's all within my budget um, I think everything's going to be move ahead now I'm going to go ahead and put in the order on the internet and uh, take this stuff up north and next week on our next video I'm going to start with the ceiling and some of you might ask why are you going to start with the ceiling first well with the tin uh, if I have my wood walls up, I don't want to be scratching that brand new wood. So we'll start with the ceiling and um, go ahead and drill the holes and prep all that for our light fixtures and a ceiling fan. And then uh, in the following weeks, we'll go ahead and we'll do the interior with the tongue and groove pine. So thank you for joining me this week on Carl's Off the Grid. We're kind of up to... Uh, up to par now as to what we're going to be doing in the cabin build and we can get the ball the ball rolling again and uh get this interior uh complete winter's coming you know we're midway through the summer right now so it's coming in in wisconsin when winter comes on it comes fast so i want to be prepared for it and have this thing done and have the uh, interior all finished have my wood burning stove in so that i can enjoy it a little bit for the hunting season so all right we'll catch you next week i'd like to thank all my uh, subscribers that i have uh, thank all the new people that are subscribing and uh, if you could 
uh, find it in your heart to go ahead and share my channel with a friend and uh, by all means give me a thumbs up and we'll catch you next time on Carl's Off the Grid.